What's going on guys, it's William, and what we are doing right now is we are doing what they call driving for dollars. And we're looking for properties that we could buy that are potentially off market, that gives us as investors less competition so we can buy it at a discount and make more money. So with that being said, let's dive into it. Welcome to the smack fest, the beat down. The SWAT team is here on another beautiful day of shutting the week down. Hey guys, and if you're new to the channel, I invest in real estate, passive income rental properties. I own a portfolio of single family, multifamily, and commercial units. I live off of passive income and I wanna show you how to do the same. Today we are driving for dollars and I'm gonna show you how I do it and I wanna show you how it can be beneficial not to you just as an investor for buy and hold properties, but if you're a flipper or you're a wholesaler as well, um, this can be worked for any strategy. Basically, we are looking for properties that have, I'm gonna kind of show you the neighborhood I'm going through right now. Oh, uh, hold on, I got some kids up here. I don't wanna be looking like I'm filming kids. Hold on, <laughs> let me try to buy them, hold on. Okay, okay. All right, so, basically driving through neighborhoods like this and these neighborhoods in particular you know these were probably built in the mid 80s and the 90s and um, you know they're they're well kept I would call this a, a nice rental grade middle class neighborhood you know this is the kind of stuff we're looking for if you look at the streets they're not too incredibly crowded um, the yards seem to be semi taken care of the houses aren't dilapidated they're not falling apart you know that's the kind of stuff we're looking for I mean there's a another view of some houses down there so when you're driving through and you're looking for properties that could could be potentially vacant, you're looking for these particular signs. So you're looking for, or what I'm looking for right now, or I'm looking for properties that don't have blinds in the front windows, for instance, and you can see all the way through. Now, why would people take their blinds when they move and why do they? I don't know, I've never done it myself, but people seem to take their blinds on the house down or off when they move out for some reason. So when you're driving through and you see a house that has no blinds and you can potentially see all the way through it, that's a good sign that the house is probably vacant and you don't have um, furniture in there. And uh, also when you see these for sale signs in yards that you drive by, you'll read it for instance. And if it's a, uh, well that one's sale pending, that's a good sign. That means the neighborhood's still, you know, actively, stuff is actively going as soon as it's posted. But, um, you know, anytime you see a for sale sign, you know, it's most likely going to be posted on the MLS unless it says for sale by owner. And those are the gold mines that you're also looking for as well. Um, another potential thing that you're going to be looking for is excess mail. And that either means um, you've got mail that's pouring out of the mailbox itself, or you've got um, a bunch of. Uh, newspapers if they're even doing that anymore you know they're like thrown out there you know for people to pick up and you've got you know f you know five of them basically you know that's the kind of stuff you're also looking for um you're also looking for really tall unkept grass uh that's can be a sign of financial uh troubles just because well mowing the grass can you know be time consuming and expensive um you're also looking for other indications of vacancies, such as overflowing trash cans. I'm looking for a good example of a property that could be something. For the most part, this pro this this neighborhood seems to be pretty well kept up, and that's great. That that also t I have a rental in this neighborhood, so I'm real familiar with this area. And that's another point I want to bring is invest in areas that you know and understand or at least learn the area and when i say learn i mean don't just like you know surf zillow for instance and say yeah i know these houses typically bring this and the rent probably brings that like actually drive these neighborhoods at all times of the day and make sure that you know these neighborhoods are something that you want to own long term i'm a long-term buy and hold investor so i may speak a little bit differently than a wholesaler for instance that just cares about making their you know five thousand dollar commission or a flipper that literally just wants to say i make this house look pretty i can make 
you know, $20,000 spread and be done with it, you know. Um, another thing is uh, there was a brand new neighborhood that I completely skipped on. You don't want to look for, typically don't want to look at the houses that are brand new builds. Uh, there's not enough equity in those properties. Uh, and if there is any equity, it's because they had to put a giant down payment and they're not going to want to leave all that on the table when they sell it. And most likely the house isn't distressed enough for them to not be able to put it on MLS and have to sell it to a cash buyer. So basically what you're looking for, and I'll show you this neighborhood I'm in right now. This neighborhood's a little bit cleaner. You see those nice fences right there? Nice fences are a good sign of a well-kept neighborhood and another good sign that people typically have a little bit of extra money in the neighborhood, which is good. Let's see that fence right there. Wow, super nice. Those fences right there could be like $10,000. So you don't have to build a fence like that if you could build a fence like that nicer one because you've got a little extra money. And that's also something you're kind of looking for. So this neighborhood is a nice, clean, middle-class neighborhood. Uh, there's a for sale sign right there. We'll go down this way. And... Uh, but basically what I was saying is, is you want to look for properties that are at, at least, at least 10, 15, 20, 30 years old. Like you want to find somebody that's been in that house basically for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, maybe 20 years or so because they have enough equity built up. Basically this, say they bought the house and this is in North Texas, so, you know, prices are definitely going to vary between, you know, Los Angeles and, you know, Missouri, for instance, or whatever. But, um, for instance, if they bought a house for, you know, $80,000, okay, in 1980, and, you know, they've lived in it, they haven't really done any repairs, it's basically, well, kind of trashed right now, you know, it needs repairs and they don't want to put any money into the property, so it can't be listed with a real estate agent because it's not bank financeable and it has to be sold to a cash buyer. But I can come in and give them, say, 125000 as is. They bought it for eighty. They basically got to trash it, got to live in it. I gave all their money back, plus a little bit more, plus they got to walk from it. To them, they may look at it as, hey, I got more than I paid for it. I got to live in this house basically for free and I didn't have to fix anything and I just kind of were, you know, did my wear and tear thing and um, now I get to walk. But to me, I look at the property and say, well, I know that the ARV, the after repair value on that property might be $210,000. It might need say $15,000, $20,000 in repairs. I know there's plenty of equity in that property and as a buy and hold investor, what I do is I buy a property I want to be in it for less than 70% of what it's going to be worth after I fix it, which is called the after repair value ARV, because I go back to a bank. Hold on, what's this? Okay. Uh, somebody got kicked out. I go back to a bank and do what they call a cash out refi. They will give me 75% cash back on the new appraisal on the property. So what does this mean? This means if I'm only in the property for 75% of what it's worth and the bank will give me 75% of what it's worth, I'm getting 100% of my money back, still keeping 25% equity in the property. And if I get it in the right area, it's still cash flowing. What happens is this. I have none of my own money in the property, nothing, but I'm still cash flowing. It's called an infinite return, and those are the holy grail in real estate investing for buy and hold, and it's what I specifically look for, and I base all of my offers and calculations off of. Because if I can make money off of a $0 investment, I can scale this business forever. There literally is no income cap at all, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, so this neighborhood's actually in really good shape, and what I might end up doing is, uh, and when I say good shape, I'm not seeing any vacancies. Uh, it seems to be pretty full, but what I'll probably end up doing is I will go online, and there are certain software programs that you can find a specific neighborhood that you want to target, and you can actually circle that on the map 
it'll bring you up all the addresses in that particular, that's my three year old, sorry, all the addresses in that particular neighborhood and you can send mailers out to every single person basically saying, hi my name is William, I'm a real estate investor, I purchase properties as is for cash, no repairs, close on your time or we can close fast, whatever is best for you. If you're interested in selling this property or have any other real estate you're interested in selling, please call me on my cell phone at blah, blah, blah. Here's my email address as well and put your business card in there, send it out and there's that. Um, what you could do, and I don't know why a lot of investors don't do this, I guess it's because it's expensive, at least initially until you get going, until you really start making some money on some properties. but. Instead of a business card or, or you know, um, uh, a flyer, you can do a flyer and a refrigerator magnet that basically is your business card. I buy houses, save this on your refrigerator for, you know, future, you know, whatever. Like, just basically, because here's what everybody does. Even people that are maybe interested in buying a house, they'll put it on their desk, they'll put it aside, and the flyer gets lost, and it gets stacked on top of other flyers, and basically you just get lost in the mix however if you're the only one with a refrigerator magnet and they put it on the refrigerator how many other refrigerator magnets to say I buy houses are there going to be that they stare at every single day so when they go to actually sell their house one day yours is probably the only one that didn't get lost because it's on the refrigerator and nobody else has thought of that I don't know why I just have never ever received one of those in the mail ever a refrigerator magnet and I think that would be an awesome opportunity um, to break out and be a little bit different uh, there's some extra mail there uh, no there's a lot of cars up front though so it's probably taken and I'm still in a neighborhood I'll, I'll show you where I'm at now so I'm in a different part of this neighborhood and this neighborhood's probably 2000 build like you know like the year 2000 you know and, and, and you got plenty of cars and you've got uh, not too many cars though, that would be a bad sign, but very well kept. I mean, see how nice that is right there? You know, all the bushes are nice and well kept. So if you can find a house in this neighborhood, these houses potentially rent for uh, the 1% rule. And what the 1% rule is, we'll just, we'll just say I have, and I don't really want to be in a property for this much, but we'll just say we have $200,000 into a property done, 100% done, okay? When you have $200,000 into a property, what the 1% rule means is you must rent it for 1% of what you have in the property. Not what the property is worth, what you have in the property. So if you have $200,000 in that property, you want to rent it for at least $2,000 per month. Now, it's going to vary between county and county and county because taxes, for instance, can vary greatly and can offset that a little bit. Um, but you also want to look at appreciation trends as well. For instance, what has happened in the last five years, 10 years? Um, and you can find this on realtor.com, you can find this on zillow.com, and they'll show you the trends. For instance, in this neighborhood alone, I bought a house for a hundred and, oh, about $160,000 in 2012, and it has doubled, literally, it's worth $300,000 today. It's doubled in value uh, in uh, six, about six or seven years. Six years it has doubled in value. Did I get lucky on the market? Yeah, I got a little bit lucky on that market. We're gonna go to a different neighborhood this time. Um, but here in Texas, you know, we get a lot of appreciation. Typically, not always, not every year appreciates and there are upturns and downturns typically every 10 years or so. There is a market correction or what a lot of people like to call a market crash. So don't just anticipate it, but also expect it and be ready for a market crash because a market crash to just about everybody is a absolute terrible thing. However, to a real estate investor, you're getting all the properties at a discount and that is the time to buy. For instance, right now during coronavirus crisis, and I'm pulling into a different neighborhood I'm gonna show you right now. So this is the new neighborhood I'm pulling into. And you see you got solar panels, that's a good sign. You got new paint, that might've been a flipper's house or a rehab house. That's actually a pretty nice house over there. See that, that's a nice curb appeal. That'd make a great rental. Or something I can turn into that. Typically though, it's not a good idea to paint brick but uh, as a flipper a lot of flippers like to do it it does look good at least on the short run 
Um, so this is the new neighborhood I'm going through and I'm not seeing anything right now. And the thing is with driving with dollar, driving for dollars is you're not gonna find something every single time. So don't think you're gonna go out one time and make a ton of money and, 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 and have offers accepted and all that good stuff. It doesn't always happen. But back to what I was trying to say, right now, before the market correction or potential market correction of 2021, it may happen, it may not happen. So if you see this in 2022 and it didn't happen, please don't flame me because I don't have a crystal ball. However, what I'm doing right now to prepare for the potential market correction is I'm taking advantage of the all-time high prices. Now, I am not selling any properties, but I'm taking all of my highest equity position properties. I'm doing a cash out refi right now, and I'm waiting for the opportunity for the market correction to come around where say there's a bunch of bank foreclosures or something, and I can get properties, and I've already had banks tell me this, for 40 cents on the dollar, that means a $100,000 property they'll sell me for potentially $40,000. Now, a market correction is only temporary, okay? When prices go from 200,000, they plunge down to say 140,000 or so, it is not going to stay there forever. It's going to come back up again. They always do. If you look at market correction or markets in general, you have an upswing. It's Prices get super high. They get to the top. It's just like a, um, it's just like a shape like a balloon. It's not a perfect circle, and then it crashes. It goes all the way to the bottom. Basically, 2008, and then it'll build up and up. Hold on, that might have been a one right there. Uh, I might turn around and look at that property. But it builds up slowly. Think of 2008. It builds up and up and up and up and up and, up and we're pretty much you know close to the peak right now. And then potentially, we've already passed the 10 year mark, so we're due for a crash. And at this point, it's basically bull climbs the stairs, the bear falls out the window. Basically what that means is the market will climb, 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 climb till it gets to the peak and then just crash. It's basically like falling off the edge of a cliff. Um, so there's actually a property out here that I just found driving for dollars. I do want to show you. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something here. All right, so I know I'm staring you in the sun right now, but this property right here, right here. So you've got you got you got furniture out there. Let me roll down this window. Uh, I don't see any blinds, so it's one 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 two. I'll have to get the address here in a second. That right there is what I'm looking for, guys. That's what I'm looking for. That's what you're looking for. I don't see blinds. I got trash in the front, and up. Uh, what's on the back here? Hold on. Yep. 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 So they're moving. Okay. So I got a vacant property that is being moved out of. Um, so see, that's a nice clean little house next door. That's the kind of stuff you look at is next door. So I'm going to look and see what this street name is so I can come back to it. I'm basically going to go home. I'm going to do some research on that and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to find the owner of that property and I'm going to skip trace that address to the owner and potentially their new address as well. And I'm gonna send letters to both that current address just in case they're still checking their mail. And I'm also going to send it to their new address or at least the address on file from the skip trace. And that will tell me you know, where they're potentially going. It'll basically say what I told you earlier. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a cash buyer. I buy as is. I would love to take a look at your property. Please give me a call. That kind of thing. And this dog's breath is kicking like you don't even know. So, um, guys, I hope you got some good nuggets of information. You guys were uh, literally on site with me today, literally seeing what I do. It literally took me, you know, 15 minutes to go through this. Consider smashing that like button if you guys got any content. Sharing to somebody you think you could use this information. And uh, consider subscribing, guys. I make multiple videos like this every single week. And it's all about helping you become a better investor or introducing you to the world of real estate and uh, until next time guys thanks for watching all the way through and i'll see you on the next one